Uh, my character is an arms dealer, Antoine Vallon, and uh, he is the the guy the cops are all chasing, and through the through most of the of the movie, and because he's a fly in the ointment through the process, uh, he decides to get rid of that problem and makes RoboCop, <laughs> RoboCop, which is you know not what he intended. Big American production, taking yeah. over the city of Toronto two summers ago now. Yeah. What was it like to work uh, in your hometown? It was fantastic. You know, it's a it's a really great city for, for them to shoot uh, pictures here. And because we have the studio space and we have great crews and we have actors that can fill those roles that, that are not cast out of Los Angeles, uh, it's it becomes a really easy place for them to shoot, subject to the, to the tax credits that make it all work. Is this one of those movies that you're hoping they're hoping to get a, a new audience with, or is the nostalgia factor in play? There's, there's certainly they want to tap into that. I mean, it's no accident that people are making uh, sequels of of these shows that people are familiar with, earlier movies that people are familiar with, and you know, it it elicits eye rolls from some people because they think, why are they making that again? But at the same time, you know, if it can get people in the into the theaters, and then you engage them and give them an entertaining two hours and something to think about uh, and launch yourself a franchise while you're at it, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a pretty good thing all around for them. There are some other notable names in the film as well. Tell us a little There's bit a about... There's a great, huge guest. Yeah, tell, us, tell us a little bit about working with that cast. Uh, it, really fantastic. You know, uh, um, top to bottom. There's some really great actors uh, as part of this company. And um, yeah, Michael K. Williams uh, was RoboCop's partner there. Uh, Omar from The Wire. Uh, one of my favorite series from TV, and uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a privilege to work with with these cats. Did you feel like at any point, because it is your hometown, you have been around here often, that you had to be a little bit of a guide? Uh, somewhat. I mean, these people are taken care of pretty well, you know, in their downtown hotels and ferried straight from the front door. Um, but being such a multicultural city, uh, a lot of people know different languages. So the directors, Jose Padilla and Lula Caballo, the cinematographer, are both Portuguese or Brazilian. Mm -hmm. So I have never wanted to speak Portuguese so much in my natural life. Right. You know, because you, you, all those conversations about shot choice and, and how, to cover, how to cover the shot and uh, positioning and whatnot, they're all conducted in Portuguese, uh, which is just maddening. <laughs> if you're sitting there sort of watching them talk. And, uh, but yeah. It definitely a franchisable uh, movie. That's certainly what they're after, you know. I mean, they they want to they want to get people interested in that character again. Um, and as I say, you know, they you are talking about things that are at the top of the public consciousness in terms of robotics, in terms of the omnipresence of surveillance, in terms of the politics of policing. Um, these things are in various ways, you know, front page news in our city. So if you can give people two hours of entertainment. You know, and also raise things for discussion. Well, isn't that great? Yeah, you mentioned the the topicalness, and that's what RoboCop really had going for it when it first came out, both in television series and film form. But do you think it was tougher this time around because of how rapidly technology is growing, or do you think it was just to help enhance the experience for a story like this? Uh, well, I think people recognize the topicality of things. You know, I mean, for example, uh, he's a cop because he's uh, a robotic resuited cop, um, he has instant access to hundreds of millions of CCTV images. Mm -hmm. So in a world of the future where everything is CCTV, you know, it's like London times 500, um, you know, the fact that he has access to all those images at any given time, plus he doesn't play by the usual rules of this is how cops and right. criminals, right? work together to get cases solved, right? There's none of that. This is a guy who goes by the book, and as a result, he disrupts both the criminals and the cops. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting, you know, and people recognize the topicality of that. 